Alright, hello everyone, this is G-Shock High Fashion Channel and welcome to another G-Vlog. Today I'm gonna try to disassemble this Bluetooth Equip Series G-Shock watch which I already reviewed to all of you guys, just in case you're new here, which I'm very sure most of you guys are. Regardless, before I proceed with the whole thing, let me give you guys some context. This is a very, very old and beaten up G-Shock watch reference number GB. Dash 6900, the back plate is still looking great, so just requires some polishing and I'm going to need to polish this buckle as well. Basically what I'm planning to do is full service this G-Shock watch and make it work again. One, some other thing that I need to point out is that the buttons, as far as the light button, is already sync in. Not sure if you guys even noticed. Look at that. I could operate the light, just press it once, you guys can already uh, notice the flash just now and as you guys can see, the battery is really low so I'm gonna need to replace the battery as well and one other thing that I need to show is that I cannot set the watch if I press the adjust button it's really hard it's almost like it is something that's stuck in there which didn't allow me to use this feature I already removed the side screws not sure if you guys noticed to make this whole process a little quicker so I could just remove the bezel just like that there is look at the mud mud get all the way in here so yeah, my guess this is the cause why the button got stuck. I'm not sure if you guys even noticed. Check this out, a lot of dirt. This button's already crushed down. Not sure how to fix this yet. Probably need to fix the spring in there. This button looks fine though. I could press it, but they didn't give any response. I know one of the reasons because of the battery is low, which, allow, which didn't allow me to use all this button. But even if the battery is not low, you know, the buttons couldn't be used. Just, just keep that in mind. Alright, next is I'm gonna need to remove the watch band which is just locked with a simple spring bar which is already coming out like that, pretty easy. So I'm gonna need to remove all the paint, scrape it off and polish the watch a resin, probably paint it back if I have any paint later on which I didn't so... Okay, done removing everything now. Let me remove the back plate and reveal what's inside the watch. Which this is a huge surprise. Takes out we have a piezoelectric speaker B32 and a metal uh, plate here in gold to shows open if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure what it's for, but anyway, pretty cool interior design and look at how it was built. Very very unique. Totally different from the usual G-Shock watch that I disassembled on the channel before. We have some sort of space, empty space going on down here. I'm not sure why, but this part is fully jam-packed with a vibrating system. Check this out. There's the weight that's gonna rotate and then vibrate the watch each time you receive any notifications from your smartphone. So this will be the back cushion, shaped differently with all those floating module points on top for back cushioning and shock exorbitant and this will be the engine of this G-Shock watch but before I remove this or take the whole thing out you know what I'm gonna need to swap the battery and see by myself if that gonna solve anything Okay, now I got the battery out. Check this out. It is really different. Surprisingly, the battery was put upside down instead of this way, which is totally different from the usual G-Shock watch that I disassembled on the channel before. So as being mentioned on this instruction on top, it actually tells us to put the negative side up and the positive side at the bottom. Look at that. And it's already show you to touch this for two seconds with the negative and AC after battery replacement. All right, I have another battery over here, so let me try to just slide it in there. Very, very unique. So negative side to up, positive side at the bottom. Different from the usual G-Shock watch. And you know what? Let me first take this O-ring out of the way. It's really getting in my way right now. So lock it back perform the AC operation which should go here and the negative side will be over there so 
Touch this and this for about two seconds and we should be good to go. There it is. So the watch currently showing open because I opened up the back plate. So in order to allow me to use all the feature of this model, I'm going to put it back into place like so. Take the back plate and close it down. And there it is, Friday will appear. And now let me test the light button. It should be working though. Wait, it's telling me to wait. It's telling me to wait. So let's just wait. Probably need to neutralize or stabilize the charge in the watch or charge or something. I don't know. All right, we're done now. There it is. The EL, sorry, the LED light, dual LED light on this G-Shock watch currently working. All right, the mode's working fine as well. And for some reason it didn't beep. But anyway. Not sure if there it is. I could use this button already, but seems like to not be detecting. Yeah, I need to clean the hard case, you know. So problem solved. Seems like the function is still working fine. So now let's us proceed by removing this engine out, like so. Okay, now that the hard case is out of the way, the display panel looks much clearer. Looks much more beautiful. If I put it back. It's just not good to the eye at all, so it now looks much better. There seems to be no problem at all with the engine as far as I can see, like no scratch at all. This looks very, very fine except for this part of the hard case. So I'm going to need to remove this faceplate now. There it is, really gorgeous faceplate. Check this out, gorgeous, just beautiful, silverish, very reflective, very futuristic style and all the details just very, very nice. So this is the hard case of this model and apparently I could remove this metal part like so. There it is. This is the first time I've done this actually. Alright, I could remove one on this side as well prior to cleaning this part up. And the glass from the interior feels fine. You could actually feel it. It's very smooth and the interior looks very very clean. Look at that. No dirt at all gets all the way in here. So it's very much protected. But one more thing is that this light button, the shaft seems to be get all the way in, even though I didn't press and so I'm very certain there's dirt gets in there or something that's stuck in there that making the buttons keep pressing down. It didn't, it can't go all the way back up. So I'm gonna need to clean this up, of course. Remove this button if possible and then try to polish this entire glass with a sandpaper and making this watch try. Uh, at least I'm gonna try to make it look good again. Anyway, this will be the engine of this model. Feels pretty heavy by the way, surprisingly. This is some code over here. We have 3210, no jewels and Castle Japan engine. Very, very beautiful. I mean, most of the space in here was acquired by this battery. Really thick, 3.2 millimeters battery and this vibrating system. The rest is just very much, very, very small. It's incredible of, of what this watch could achieve with this tight space, you know. It's so nice. So, you know what? I'm gonna need to try to... So this is the first compartment which is hold everything into place. This is the battery and this is the battery compartment where this three spring or four spring goes. Two over here and one over here and one goes down here. That's basically it that connects to the circuit board down here. And this is how the circuit board looks like just in case you were wondering. We have some code over here 111 and that's pretty much it. This is probably the regulator for the timekeeping and this is the uh, vibration unit since we have some brand going over there. S H I C O H, and that's the weight, the counterweight that's gonna rotate each time this mode receives the notifications, and it is literally wired here all the way down here to the circuit board. 
and if I lift this up you guys could able to see what's inside there and we have two spring over here there it is to connect to the LED light on this side and two more tiny springs to connect to the LED light on this side as well I don't want to remove the double sided that is holding this motor into place because if I do it's gonna be very tricky for me to put it back into place because I don't have any parts for replacement and so I'm just gonna stop over here there's the display panel connector you guys could already see that and that is the display panel on there which is really straightforward by the way all right that's done really large and very incredible timepiece for the price and totally worth it in my opinion so now I'm going to need to uh, sandpaper this part and making it look good again and update to you guys in the future after I'm done with it or else this video is going to end up really really long but for now that's it, I hope you guys found this video a little bit useful, informative and entertaining as well for your future reference, leave a like if this video does help you and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this coming up in the future, thank you very very much for watching, this is G-Shock Fashion Channel and I'll